Okay, the H1B guy here, and tonight, the Documented Dreamers Series Live, February 18th, 2021, hosted by the H1B guy. We'd like to ask you, if you haven't already, to please subscribe to the H1B guy channel here on YouTube and like this video so that I can continue to produce more content like this for you. I also wanted to mention that the H1B Guy offers a variety of consulting services. I help businesses and individuals solve complex work authorization issues in the recruitment process while bringing awareness to employment-based immigration benefits. Tonight's stream is brought to you by RecruiterNetworks.com, the smart solution for digital perm ads since 2001. Well, if you're new to this channel and you're wondering why me, Robert, the H1B guy is covering documented dreamers or legal childhood arrivals, that answer is, is quite simple. One of the founding principles and missions of the H1B guy platform is to bring awareness to employment-based immigration benefits. And this issue, aging out has a huge direct and indirect impact in that regard. I know a lot of you are going to join and watch us here tonight. We typically do a Q&A on a lot of these live streams. We'd like to do some of that tonight if we have time. But I do want to ask you that are watching, if you're impacted by this issue, to post your story in the chat. If you have a question that we may not be able to answer tonight or get to, but I know that someone that is out there watching that's in the chat may be able to answer for you, don't hesitate and be afraid uh, to check that out um, and, and post that in the chat tonight. If you have a documented dreamer and you're not sure what to do next, please, and I'll share this link in a few minutes, uh, have them go to improvethedream.org slash survey and fill out that survey and someone from the Improve the Dream team will be in touch. So without any further ado, I want to introduce to you um, these three new faces tonight. Um, sorry, I don't know why I didn't have uh, Watch Me screen up, but I have her up now. Um, I'm going to start with uh, with Hillary. Hillary, how are you doing tonight? Hi, I'm doing well. How about you? Doing very good. Thanks for joining us. And Lakshmi, how are you doing tonight? Hi, Rob. I'm doing well. Thank you so much for having us tonight. Sorry, I didn't realize I didn't have your screen up. No, had that's you up before we went live, and then I don't know what happened. So apologies. And Padma, how are you doing tonight? I'm good. I'm really excited. Awesome. Thanks for joining us. And uh, for those of you who already know Deep, how you doing, man? Thanks for uh, for coming on again tonight. Hey, Rob. Thanks for having us again. Doing great. Absolutely. So I wanted to, um, you know, start off here tonight with, uh, with some quick introductions. Um, but before we move on, let me post, post this link here um, in the chat for those of you who, uh, who are looking for it the improve the dream uh, org slash survey. And I'm going to show this here on the screen. So if you have a documented dreamer, if you are someone, one of the 50 who's currently watching and, and it's growing as, as the ticker counts, you need to go to improve the dream.org tonight. Don't wait till tomorrow. Have your dependent, your dreamer, your documented dreamer go and complete this survey. Um, Deep is going to talk about, about why that's very important. So I'm going to kick it over to Deep for an update on uh, improvethedream.org over the last month. And also, you know, the news that, that broke late yesterday, early today, the text of the U.S. Citizenship Act of 2021 was, was released. I know Deep's had a chance to, to review that and, and working with some folks on some of that language. So Deep, I'm just gonna kick it over to you for, uh, for a quick update. Thank you, Rob. Uh, and as Rob said, please make sure um, uh, if you're a documented dreamer or if your kids are documented dreamers that they uh, complete this survey at improvethedream.org survey. 
Um, once they do that, um, I'll be able to send them a invite link to our Slack group uh, where we work together with um, other documented dreamers and work together to have uh, do advocacy for our cause. So just a quick update uh, since we uh, last had uh, we were last on this show about a month ago. Um, we over the last month and a half uh, as an organization, we've been able to have over uh, uh, 25 congressional meetings, including 10 in the Senate and over 20 in the um, in the House House side. And then we've also been able to get a few meetings with members of Congress. Um, and we've been speaking about um, documented dreamers inclusion uh, in the upcoming Dream Act, as well as uh, inclusion in the comprehensive bill. So to start off, I'll go ahead and start reviewing, um, kind of go give a quick overview of the bill that came out today. So as many of you know, the US Citizenship Act, uh, the text of that bill was um, released earlier today. And just to start off with, it is a great bill. It's a really comprehensive, expansive bill that takes care of issues ranging from um, undocumented immigration to doc uh, legal immigration. Um, uh, it helps the backlog. It protects aging out for H4 kids. Uh, it also has um, the DREAM Act in there. Now, um, it seems like from the uh, current version of the text uh, that children, it, documented children would also qualify under the pathway, uh, the DREAM Act pathway to citizenship under that bill. Uh, however, there's a little bit of confusion right now because there is a, a section of the bill that uh, says that uh, anyone who was a non-immigrant uh, before January 1st, 2021 would not qualify for that pathway to citizenship. Now, there's some confusion because it looks like there's a drafting error which actually allows us to qualify, but it seems that this was not actually intended. But uh, it's something that we'll, we'll be working closely with um, the folks on the Judiciary Committee um, who we're in contact with and make sure that uh, during the markups, they make sure that we are included for the accelerated pathway to citizenship that's offered for documented dreamers. So as it stands now, technically everyone um, basically can apply, if that bill were to become law, everyone would be able to apply for uh, a pathway to citizenship, whether you're a documented dreamer or a parent, uh, as it looks like that pathway uh, is open to whether someone is undocumented or documented. But we'll have to watch closely to make sure it stays that way because it looks like, again, there was a drafting error which allows that. Um, so I will say it is definitely a little um, concerning that there would be a possibility that um, children in, an, uh, in a documented status would be excluded. And that's why I think it's very important for us, especially as young people. Um, so if your parents, your kids to um, voice uh, and help uh, advocate and meet with uh, representatives and um, senators, offices and their legislative assistants to bring this uh, to their attention. And that's what we've been working on. So uh, most recently uh, I've, uh, I've been trying to set up uh, group meetings with um, uh, important offices in the House and have also started to do that in the Senate. So the starting with the Senate Judiciary Committee, who will be in charge of uh, both this comprehensive bill in the Senate and as, uh, as well as the, uh, the DREAM Act that was released a few weeks ago. Um, as far as uh, what we're working towards um, or what I think is going to happen for this bill, um, it, it seems like there really won't be much of a chance for the huge comprehensive bill to become law because of uh, because it would require 60 votes in the Senate. Um, so I think uh, personally and uh, collectively, I think the focus really will be to make sure when this big bill is broken up, um, we're, if we're included in, in the smaller section. So for example, I think the most likely um, section to move is going to be something around dreamers. Uh, so our focus right now, our number one focus will be to make sure that we're included on the House version of the Dream and Promise Act when that is uh, released very soon. And um, we're in conversations with the folks that are uh, drafting that bill as well. And I'm confident that if we keep pushing, uh, we can make sure the language that we want will be included.
That bill is 353 pages. And the interesting thing about it is it's bigger language wise and, and word count wise than the current book I'm reading on immigration, ironically. Um, but it's interesting how you and I were chatting earlier today, Deep, and we were talking about the difference in open parentheses, lowercase a, closed parentheses being in front of a number or behind it, right? And how that can change legislation, literally snap your finger. And so uh, good to know, but hopefully, I, I think the hope is that there was a lot of language in there for H4 dependents um, and work authorization around that. And, and is it going to require, um, you know, a work authorization card? Um, but, you know, the, the thing that, that for me, you know, for you guys and, and improve the dream that's really big is the date that I saw was January 1st, 2021, right? So had to be in the country before that cutoff date is my understanding, correct? That's correct. And um, so it really depends on what they were intending. So again, that drafting error that we talked about, are they, if they were intending um, to say that you had to be undocumented before that date, now that would be a concern. And that's something that we would hope that they do end up fixing during the markup. But if they keep it how it is, um, it's kind of unclear what, they'll, uh, what they're intending to do. But we'll, uh, I think over the next few days, uh, I'm gonna try to follow up with those offices and get a clarification for, those, um, for that language, like what they're actually intending to do with that. Uh, so hopefully it's not something, it, it, hopefully we are um, included in that final uh, markup of that bill. Uh, so again, just as a disclaimer to everyone, this was just introduced. And so it's a long path ahead. It's not going to become law overnight. And no. it's it's not a... Um, I think end of, the year is, end of the year is hopeful. Just being honest, there's going to be a big push because you're, you're leading into another election year going into next year, which is another election year. So there will be a big push if they're really wanting to use this, the meat here with, with just comprehensive immigration reform, 353 pages, you'll, you're going to see a push. You'll see this push start to happen when you're going to start to see pieces of this be taken out and modifications of other existing um, let language that's out there be included. Um, so, but this is big news, man. I, you know, I think we saw this come out from leading into the inauguration. It was day one agenda. Um, but when I, when I do my, I asked for the cliff notes version tonight on Twitter, when I just give it the eye test, it's a few pages of legal immigration and a lot towards undocumented. And, and that is something I think is very evident in, in the current administration's agenda and, and policy, something I warned about leading back to, um, you know, after the election and, and as we started to look ahead. Um, but deep, you know, I'm impressed by what you're doing, how you're going about this. Every time we talk, it, it just is truly amazing how far you've moved and proved the dream. Um, and as you continue to advocate, you know, the connections that you're building are, are just unbelievable and, and you're just becoming quite this force in the scene. So thank you for that update and, and the quick information on that. I want to go around now and, and introduce you to these new dreamers. They've had two seconds and we've done a lot of talking. So time for them to do the talking here. So I want to start with, with Hillary and Hillary, I'd like for you to just tell us a little bit about your backstory. How long have you been in the U S uh, where'd you grow up? What are you doing right now? All right. Hi guys. I'm Hillary. Um, thanks for having me tonight. So I was born in South Korea and I lived there until I was 10 months old and my family moved here um, in Washington and we've been living here ever since. 
Um, and now I am currently a junior in high school and um, I'm just living with my parents here and my I have two older siblings and they are one of them are actually out of the US back in South Korea and the other is living here in America. And I know you and I talked about you and you mentioned your, your brother and, and your sister. And I know that, that I believe you said one's 12 years older than you and the other's nine years older than you when, when we talked. That's and, correct. And, yeah. and I think one of the things that, that you, you told me is that, you know, you were kind of too young to really understand what they were going through. But this realization hit you as a sophomore in high school that, oh, that's what that was all about. Can, can you talk about that a little bit and, and, and what that has been like for you? Yeah, of course. So um, when I was younger, of course, I didn't know what these issues were. We had countless conversations at dinner with what my siblings were going to do in college or before college or even after they graduate. There was just so many conversations about that and concerns. And I was very young, so I didn't understand what they were talking about, but I just knew that there was an issue. And now that I have to go through the same thing, um, I am worried. And now I do understand what they were going through. And it, it, it's upsetting to know that if I were to, if I was born 11 months earlier, then I wouldn't have to go through all of this um, hardship, I guess. So yeah, I did hit that realization and it was, it brought me back to my siblings thinking, oh, this is what they were going through. Like, I totally get it now. Yeah. And I think, you know, you, you and I talked about, you know, here you are a junior in high school and, you know, thinking about, okay, hey, 18 months from now, what's next for me? And, and, you know, we, we talked about, oh, well, hey, you know, I'm looking at, universities here in the US, but I also am considering, you know, institutions in, in South Korea as well. You know, is that something that, that you decided on your own? Or was that something that that you and your parents talked about? Yeah, so now that college is slowly approaching, it's um, college is really important to me, I definitely want to attend and I would do anything to attend a college in America but I don't know what options are going to be open for me and exactly what's going to happen. So me applying to colleges in Korea isn't necessarily something that I'm eager to do, but it's the only option I have because I need a safety in case I can't stay in the US anymore. So that is solely the reason why I would be, why I'm going to apply to um, a few universities in South Korea. And you said your brother is in South Korea, correct? Is that, is that right? I mean, I know there's yes. a, an age difference there, but at, at least you have that. I think a lot of dreamers that we talk to don't even have that as an option where there's family in another country for you to fall back on. So thank you for, for sharing that. So I wanted to, to move on to, to Lakshmi. And, uh, you know, I wanted to, to just have you tell us a little bit about, you know, the pride of of the Drexel Dragons, if, if you will, and uh, you know how, how you ended up at Drexel. How long have you been here in the U.S. and um, you know what what that path has been like for you? Thank you, Rob. So hi, everyone. So I'm Lakshmi, and I'm from the suburbs of Philadelphia. So I was born in India, and my parents and I we moved to Dallas, Texas, when I was three years old. Um, on an L1B visa. So we lived in Texas for about five years and I went to school in Texas from pre-K to third grade. But two months into third grade, we abruptly had to move back to India because our L1A extension got denied. So I went to school in India for third grade and fourth grade. And then in fifth grade, we moved here to the suburbs of Philly again on an L1B visa. So the thing about the L1B visa is it's only valid for five years. So in sixth grade, like something that my parents told me was like, listen, like this visa, like we can only stay on it for five years. Like we're going to try to switch to another visa, but there's a chance that we might have to move back to India. So that's something that's like always been on my mind, like ever since sixth grade. So we applied for the H-1B lottery 
three times, but we didn't get it the first two times around, which is why we had to apply three times. But luckily, um, we got we got the H one B lottery um, in twenty seventeen, I think. So I've been an H four dependent ever since um, twenty seventeen. And um, like Rob was saying, I now go to Drexel University here in Philadelphia, and I'm a health sciences major on the pre medicine track. And I know that, you know, when you and I talked, you, you talked about, you know, hey, when you turned 18 and decided to go to university, you know, this past fall, that you decided to kind of take matters into your own hands in terms of, of your status and, and really not sit around and, and wait, right? And so what led you to make that decision? Can, can you talk a little bit about just kind of taking the bull by the horns, if you will, and why you decided to, to, to go down the path that you, you're going down? Yeah, of course. So um, just a little backstory, like um, something that my parents told me around sophomore year of high school was that I don't qualify for in-state tuition. I don't qualify for most financial aid or scholarships. So having said that, like even though I've been living in um, Pennsylvania since. We lost her. She'll jump back in. Um, you know, I think uh, here she comes. We lost you for a second. So since you've been living in Pennsylvania, go ahead. Yeah. So um, so I've been living in Pennsylvania since fifth grade. But despite living here for all these years, like Pitt was the only school that I qualified for in-state tuition at. So luckily, like here at Drexel, because Drexel is a private institution, like um, I'll pay the same regardless of if I'm on an H-4 visa or an F-1 student visa. So we decided to start the um, change of status process to F-1 earlier than most people do. So the reason for that is because like I'll be paying the same regardless of if I'm on H4 or F1. And the thing about it's like if I'm on an H4, then I can't legally work. And with how high um, tuition costs, like not being able to work and not being able to like lean on financial aid can be a really tough situation. So that's why um, we decided to start the change of uh, status process earlier than most um, dependent visa children choose to do. And one of the things that you know you talked about a lot is your parents and how they've just been the biggest supporters and and advocates for you do you think that that's motivated you now to to speak out like you're doing honestly rob yes like definitely it's, uh to be completely honest like i went to a predominantly white high school so i've never really been comfortable speaking about this issue but my parents have definitely been my biggest supporters and like the reason that i even decided to um major in health sciences and go on the pre-medicine track like is because of them because in like around sophomore year they told me that when i'm applying to medical school like how hard it would be because i would be considered an international student and that would make it significantly harder you know so when i told them like okay maybe like this isn't what i want to do they were like no like this it seems like this is what you want to do like we're here to support you like just don't worry about your visa status like just work as hard as you can and everything will work out and i'm not sure if they know that everything is going to work out but the fact that they've constantly been telling me that is definitely the reason that i'm still that i still haven't given up well if they're watching right now or at a future point in time they have a lot to be proud of that's for sure so I wanted to move on to Padma and uh, Padma, I want to have you tell us your story. You know, you, you came to the U S probably the youngest, I believe of, of the three here. Um, so tell us about your journey. How'd you come to the U S and, uh, and what are you doing right now? Yeah, of course. So it's definitely been weird for my family because I was actually in the United States before I was born, but when they unexpectedly lost their jobs, they had to go back to India, and that's when I was born, in 2003 in January. And then uh, eight months later, in 2003 August, I came to America, so I was only eight months old. And since then, we've been living here. Um, I live in Connecticut, Texas, Ohio, and now I live in Illinois, so it's been kind of a weird journey. I've been on an H-4 visa dependent on my mom or my dad's H-1B, just depending on the situation. and. It's just been hard um, because I haven't known anyone up until very recently in the same situation as me. But uh, finding out about this was really motivating because last year, um, my junior year is kind of when I realized 
um, just the situation that we're in, same thing as everyone else was talking about with college, not qualifying for in-state tuition and having to be considered international. And so I'm just really excited to be, you know, part of a organization that's doing something about it. But yeah, now I'm a senior in high school. Um, in a few months, I'll have to make a decision about college, which is a bit scary. Um, not sure where I'm going to go right now. A lot of it's depending on, you know, this administration and um, just our situation. And I think what I think is interesting about your story and parallel to, to Hillary's is you, you had told me that you, know, you were looking at universities here in the U.S., but that you were also considering schools in the U.K., as well what 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 led you to do that is it just because hey if i'm going to be an international student i might as well be an international student you know somewhere else what what led you to that yeah so um around march of last year i was sort of looking into colleges and my dad was saying you know maybe we should just see if there's somewhere else that you want to apply to in case something doesn't work out and i was at first it was just sort of like um just throwing something in just in case but then I started really looking into it and it seems like a reasonable option, especially if I'm on an F1 visa here, it's gonna be a similar tuition. And I do have family in the UK and it's exactly what you said. It's if I'm going to be considered international, I would like to actually be an international student. And you know, it's it's been a hard decision and obviously I haven't made it yet, but I think looking into international uh, schools is a good idea. Um, just, yeah. Do you think if your status w wasn't uncertain that you'd be looking at international universities or would it just be a no brainer for you to stay here? Yeah, I definitely wouldn't be looking into it if I was a green card holder or a citizen. It Just knowing that I would be on an F-1 visa when my parents at one point 30 years ago were on an F-1 visa, just mm -hmm. it was really frustrating, especially because of that. Just knowing that all of my time spent here basically wouldn't mean anything. So it was because of the status. And what's interesting about that is this is why these stories have this indirect impact in employment based preferences, because if your status wasn't in jeopardy, you would be almost guaranteed to be U.S. institutionalized, meaning U.S. university, U.S. trained and educated, and then enter into the U.S. workforce. And that is to me where we're really missing the mark because kids who were brought here as eight months old like yourself are being put in this position where you have to say maybe i should consider the uk maybe they're going to be more friendly to me if i'm uk educated then maybe there's a different path for my citizenship there right and and i think that that's the cycle that makes it so difficult for folks like me who advocate for STEM, quite honestly, and, and look, STEM, 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 right? I mean, let's call it what it is. Um, that's where it's it becomes so frustrating for me. And that's why we have to continue talking about this issue and having teenagers like you, kids, as I like to call you guys, come on and, and, and tell your story. So I wanted to ask everyone again, if you're currently watching and if you haven't already, please hit that like button. Um, my kids tell me that all, all their YouTubers say smash it. I just say, please just hit the like button. I'll take just the like hit. Um, they also want me to say subscribe if you haven't already to the H1B Guy channel here on YouTube. I really appreciate it. It helps me to produce more content like this and bring it to a much broader platform and audience. Um, I also wanted to bring up improvethedream.org slash survey. If you are watching and you have a documented dreamer who is your dependent, have them go to this website and fill out the survey. Okay, deep needs your help. This is where you can help. Like Lakshmi's parents have advocated for her 
Hillary's parents found and proved the dream for her. This is your opportunity to connect your kid to improve the dream. I also wanted to mention um, a huge thank you to one of my biggest and loyal supporters, Samir. You are just a godsend. Thank you for the super chat support. My first super chat here on the H1B Guy channel. So you three and deep. Uh, thank you for coming on and giving me an opportunity um, to have folks like Samir contribute to this awareness and what we do here on this channel. So I want to move now to uh, group chat. Um, this is just going to be kind of a group q and I'm going to talk about some of the issues that I, that I see going on, and, and I want to really get a feel for, for, what, for what your opinions are on this. So I want to start off with talking about a lack of awareness around this issue as a whole. I had a lot of my personal friends watch the first documented Dreamer series live um, back with Deep and Summer and uh, Vishal and Palami and Anag and come back to me and say, I had no idea this was even happening which it made me realize how often this isn't talked about even by the individuals that are going through this in their families. And, and we alluded to this a little bit earlier. And you hear this a lot referenced for the, the undocumented dreamers, which is living in secrecy coming out of the shadows. It's almost like this big, huge secret for you, even though you're legal documented dreamers that you just can't talk about. Why do you think that's the case? Lakshmi, I want to start with you because you shared, you know, this earlier said, you know, I really hadn't talked about it, but then I, I had this pivot. Why do you think that there's this secret or you feel like almost you have to live in secrecy around it? Yeah, Rob. So I feel like for part of for me, like the whole like growing up in a predominantly white neighborhood, I think that was one of the main reasons why I never felt like I could really relate to people around me. But also the thing was like, like in high school, like even when I did tell my counselors about it, about my situation, they didn't really know how to help me. Like, for example, like when I first told them about my situation, like they sent me like DACA resources. And I remember thinking like, okay, this is amazing, but like this doesn't really apply to me. So I think that I was, I felt kind of discouraged to talk about it because I was like, okay, even if I do tell people, like, are they really going to be able to help me? And I think what's different between you and Padma, for example, is Padma's grown up and where she, her, her teenage years have been. And I think you would describe a, a more diverse um, sur suburban area of uh, outside of Chicago. Um, and I think that for you, Padma, that maybe has led your situation to be more open about what's going on. Yeah, completely. Um my school is is very diverse a lot of different kinds of people which has made it a lot easier to talk about different issues i think a lot of us are more open to activism and awareness of different issues but you know i've, I've always been open about it i've talked to my friends about it um, i think some of them are here now actually which has been really great they've been very supportive of me and it's it's been really helpful in getting the word out because i'm probably one of the only people in the situation that they know and so and I think that's what makes it rare, right? Is it just takes one person to tell this story and and then all of a sudden, guess what? Now parents of your friends are aware of it. And that's how advocacy really starts. Emails start to get sent to, to state officials, uh, to Congress, House of Reps, to state senators um, that says, hey, let me tell you about my daughter's friend who has been here since she was eight months old. And I think that, you know, Hiller, your, your story is kind of similar in, in that, you know, from an age perspective. Um, and I know that for you, you know, your, your parents have pushed you to, to become more active and in, in vocal in this. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about, you know, what, what that secret, so to say, is, has been like for you? Yeah, of course. Um, I guess for me, I didn't feel comfortable talking about it to anyone that 
wasn't going through it because I felt as if no one would understand my situation fully since they weren't going through it. Um, and I, I heard all my life, like I, from my family that they've all tried, of course, they've been trying ever since that, ever since we've been here. Um, but no one has helped them. So I guess I felt discouraged and that telling people wouldn't make a difference. And I didn't want to burden anyone with a problem I had that they couldn't fix. So that was solely the reason why I didn't bring it up. Um, I just didn't feel comfortable. And, and I didn't want people to misunderstand it a little bit and then twist my situation. So I just kept it a secret. And I would say that most of my friends don't completely understand my situation. Yeah, now it's like, you know, the thing that I'm hearing from the three of you is I don't have anything to lose now, right? If I sit here in silence, I've already lost. And I think that that's, I mean, so powerful, right? It, it, it's, it, it centers you almost and, and leads me into kind of the, the next thing, which is, you know, well, none of you were actually born here. You know, the one thing that continues to resonate with me and all the kids that I've, I've met that are involved with ImproveTheDream.org is this concept of you identifying as American, not your country of, of birth. Help me understand what being American means to you. Padma, you want to start us off with that one? Sure. Um, I think for me, Amer being American is just going to school every day and standing up and saying the Pledge of Allegiance to the American flag every day. You know, it's just living with your peers and your friends and having the same childhood experiences as them. Um, one thing that especially resonated with me and like my identity was I'm in marching band, I play the saxophone and we had a, a theme which was the USA theme. And I mean, I was sitting alongside them during our halftime show, just playing the Star Spangled Banner, um, you know, and I didn't feel like we were different in any sort of way. Um, that was kind of like a really big moment for me when we were, you know, playing those American songs. And I just, you know, thought, you know, what is the difference between us? You know, it was because I came here eight months later, you know? Yeah. And the person you're sitting next to, you know, blowing the same notes, right. And harmonization. Uh, yeah. That's, I, I think, that, but that's, that, that grows you up, matures you very quickly. Right. Um, Hillary, what do you, what do you think? What, what do you identify as, as, you know, being American to you? Yeah. So for me, I didn't know that there was much of a difference between my friends and I until I got a little bit older. When I was in, let's say third grade, I didn't know the difference because I didn't understand it. And then when I started realizing the legal matter, um, that's when I was like, oh, I'm not American. Um, and that was solely because I wasn't born here, but I've been here since I was 10 months old. I went to school here. I played sports here. I did everything here. And this is the only place that I've lived in. This is the only place I know. So knowing that I can't say I'm American just doesn't make any sense to me because I've only been here. Um, but yeah, that is what I consider being American. Just, just knowing that this is the only place that you grew up and the only place that um, you've known. Lakshmi, you got anything you want to add on that? Yeah, Rob. So to me, like being American means having equal opportunities and being able to dream. Like I want to be able to believe that if I work hard enough, I can be anything I want to be. And that's something that my parents tell me. And sometimes it's easy to believe that and sometimes it's not. So I think that I think that's what being American means to me. So being able to dream and being able to believe in the American dream and being able to believe that if I work hard enough, then I can chase my dreams. It's funny. We talk about what is the American dream defined and it's opportunity really. And, and can you go and take it because no one's going to go do it for you. I, I can tell you that, you know, your parents can push you so far, but at, at the end of each day, it's really about you. And, and I think that, you know, that's what makes the three of you and, and deep what you're doing just so amazing for me to, to witness from 
from the seat that I sit in here, it's, it's just amazing. Um, I wanted to move on to something that also kind of came out of the conversation last month that we didn't get to talk about, but I wanted to make sure that we hit on it here. And Deep, I want to get your take on this too, because you ha you haven't got to answer this question yet either. And, and that is the 21st birthday. And as a native born American, turning 21 is the mark of adulthood, right? can legally buy booze, you can gamble. It just kind of gives you this like, uh, I'm legal now. Whereas for documented dreamers, the lead up to the 21st birthday is almost the exact opposite, which is this dread and fear of everything that goes into aging out and what that means for your future. So I wanted to just talk about that a little bit. Deep, I want to start with you because you didn't get the answer. We didn't talk about this last month, and I want to talk about this tonight. Have you start, and then girls just jump in after, after he goes. I think, Rob, you're completely right. It's nothing like what you explained. <laughs> Um, not looking forward to it. For most documented dreamers, you're actually kind of regretting it. So for me personally, I mean, so that was a few years ago, but I can tell you I wasn't looking forward to it. I was probably more invested in seeing what's happening, um, what's going to happen in the election and what's going to uh, be going on with immigration reform or what's going to have the best chances for us to be included in immigration reform. So what happens is, uh, especially for uh, those of us that are growing up with knowing the legal um, issues that we're going to be facing, we'll be completely kind of drowned in that process of switching to a, either an international student visa or what's going to happen um, if that international student visa gets denied, which um, luckily that did not happen to me, but I know that's a problem a lot of um, H4 dependents do face because of the issues of um, their green card uh, process uh, being ongoing and being dual intent, and then the uh, international student visa not being uh, a dual intent. So uh, th that's something that's definitely a fear uh, a lot of uh, people face and one that I certainly did. And then also looking um, on that note, also kind of looking at uh, after graduation, uh, that's something you can't really celebrate because you don't know, it's kind of like a ticking uh, clock after you graduate. You don't know how long uh, you'll be able to stay after either your OPT ends, which is usually just one year, um, or whether you'll be able to get another temporary status. So it's definitely something I think people fear rather than look forward to. Yeah, the cycle, right? You know, from h4 dependent or e2 dependent into f1 into opt into h1b or outside of the country it's the cycle girls any of you want to take a stab at what what that's like for you i know the three of you aren't 21 yet but you know kind of what you're going through leading up to that yeah i can speak i think for me it was more so just um graduating high school because that's when we really had to start thinking of, okay, do we need to switch to the F1 student visa? And I remember when I was a freshman, I sort of became aware of this. And at that point I was like, oh, do I need to worry about the interview? I mean, what am I gonna say? My parents were like, oh, don't worry about it. Okay, that's like five years away, it's gonna be fine. And then now it's coming up in a few months and you know, now I'm just really dreading it. I'm hoping that something's gonna happen every month, but it's just sort of seeming less and less um, realistic that something's gonna happen by the time I get into college. And so even after that, figuring out what I'm gonna do before I turn 21 is, is really scary. And it's hard because I know that after I age out and switch and get away from the, F, the H4 visa, it's gonna be challenging. If something happens positively to my parents' status, it's gonna be a different process. So yeah, it's it's, it's um, difficult to look forward to that. Yeah, anxiety, fear, right? That uncertainty. Hillary, what do you think? For me, um, you know, I still have a few years until I turn 21. Um, but 
it was more watching my siblings turn 21 and that's when they needed to figure out what can I do. Um, and for my brother, uh, clearly he's back in South Korea now. And as for my sister, what I watched her do is she had to, when she was a senior in, um, and senior, she got a job, but then they didn't apply for visa on time. Um, so then she couldn't work there anymore. And that meant she now needs to go back to Korea because she's not doing anything in America. So then, you know, we talked as a family and the only option left was her going to school again. So she did the master's program. And then there was another worry after she graduated from there, because it's like, if I don't get a job now, then I really have to go back. So luckily she did get a job, but it was, it's always like such a tight process. Like, can I miss, can I make the mark? Can I make the cutoff? Um, so I am very nervous for that day. Um, but yeah, I mostly just watched my siblings go through, uh, turn Much me, do you have anything you wanted to add on that? Yeah, Rob. So I'm actually going through the change of status to F1 um, process right now. Like I applied for my F1 back in the fall and I'm still waiting for it to be approved. And it's the process itself is difficult. Like um, like Deep was saying earlier, like when you're applying for it, there's a question that asks if you have immigrant intent. And if you're an H4 dependent, like that becomes that's a, that's a hard question to answer, you know? So being in that position and also um, if you apply for a change of status while changing, while staying in the US, that process takes even longer than exiting the country and doing it. So that's something that I've definitely had to worry about. Yeah, it's just, I think it's something that the common native born American can't really understand or, or relate to. And so that's, you know, why we have to, to have you guys on to talk about it and, and bring awareness to it and document this place and time and history and advocate for, for change, which, you know, leads me into, I wanted to just kind of go around and talk about, um, you know, how you got involved with Improve the Dream. What would be some advice for uh, maybe a teenager who's watching this, who's afraid to, to speak up or a parent um, who has documented dreamers that are their dependents. What would your advice be for, for either one of those two sets of individuals and, and why they need to be involved with Improve the Dream? So I can answer that. So the first yeah, thing go. that I would recommend for all parents of documented dreamers or any documented dreamers watching is please, please join our Slack group. Because in the next few weeks, next few months, like we'll be posting a lot of important updates. And that's really how you can stay up to date on what we're doing and how you can inv get involved. And honestly, I've met a lot of amazing people through Improve the Dream. So I strongly recommend um, joining our Slack group to seeing how you can get involved. And I know that speaking up can be incredibly difficult because that's something that I've struggled with and still continue to struggle with. But when you're a part of this community, like it really feels like you're part of something much bigger than yourself. And I think that's one of the first steps to, um, in making sure that everyone can speak up. Yeah, p power in numbers, right? I mean, it, 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 we talk about there's power in individual numbers and there's power in dollar bill numbers, right? It's those two things go hand in hand when you're talking about advocacy. Padma, what do you, what, what would your advice be? Um, I think a good piece of advice is just to try and get a one-on-one -on -one conversation with someone in a situation like you, because I didn't know anyone in this situation until about a year ago. And I was just like frantically Googling H4 kid college, you know, <laughs> positions like that. And I found this um, Reddit post and it had like two comments on it. And this girl explained her story. Um, and I was like, that's, that's exactly what I'm going through. And I reached out to her. Um, and that's how I, and they found anyone on the same status as me. And we just talked and I was like, oh, when did you come here? And what's your day? What, what's your plan? And it was so um, calming. And I just, it was really good mentally just to know that someone understands. So I think just for the mental aspect of it, just try and reach out to someone through this Slack group or just through um, uh, like social media online. I know if you Google the same thing, you'll 
find someone and it, it's it's very helpful so that's what i would say yeah i think it's community right you know that's building community is such a big part of what's happening right now uh, in terms of this the shift that that COVID created in our society and that community now is digital right and you know reddit for all its garbage look what it did for you right i mean just being honest i mean it it uh he, the rabbit hole that is reddit can be deep and and dark but uh you know there is stories like it that come out for for you um hillary what would what would you say um for me i think joining improve the dream it gave me more hope because like I mentioned previously, I thought there was no other way for me. There was no, there nothing was going to change. So I was just gonna have to go through this huge um, struggle. Um, but definitely joining Improve the Dream made me realize that if people start speaking out about it, there can be a change. So I really recommend if you're going through the same situation or if you wanna help us, then please join and I'm sure you won't regret it. You know, really appreciate you you speaking out on that, and you know, again, uh, improve the dream dot org slash survey. If you are a dreamer, documented dreamer, watching this and not sure what to do next, this is your next move. Once we get done with this stream, or open an entirely new window on your your device or on your your laptop. Um, but it's very important because through this improve the dream dot uh, org slash survey is where you can get connected into the Slack group and where you can begin to get this sense of community that you're advocating for the same cause and that there are others like you who are going through the same problem and that have been doing so for decades. As Hillary said, her brother's 12 years older than her. So this isn't something that is just an overnight issue. This is something that's been going on for quite a, some time here in this country, and it's time for something to change. So I got challenged by my really good friend today on Twitter, Christine Mikulajuk. If you guys have not followed Christine on Twitter, I highly advise it. Uh, Christine is Harvard educated, now living abroad in London because her perm labor was denied. And she has spoke out on merit and skill and why it's the worst way to come to America. Um, and she asked me to challenge and prove the dream specifically. And maybe one of you three that's on tonight um, to pin your story for medium and so deep if you have somebody that's willing to put their story on paper i can get them connected with christine and she can help guide them on getting it published on medium um, i think that a personal story and then promoting improve the dream would be a great step um, the brilliant mind of christine recommends something my advice is that we need to grab the reins and go so I'm just going to put that challenge out there to you, uh, Deep, and, and to you Absolutely. three. Listen, don't be forced by me. Be compelled and called by Christine. And I'll leave it at that for any documented dreamers who are watching, any of you associated with Improve the Dream. This isn't limited to just one of you. That's the great thing about Medium is that you can tell your story there. And so I wanted to make sure I plugged that so that I didn't get a, uh, a DM from Christine later uh, telling me that I forgot to do that. So, um, so that's it. We have a bunch of chat questions that have come up. Um, and some some comments. I'm just going to pull them up. There's still about 60 folks that are streaming right now. So if you have any questions, there's a couple in here that I want to bring up that are that are really good. Um, and I think some some that you're going to have answers for. So first of all, this is Rajiv's a good follower here of the channel. He just wants to know any hope for aging out kids. Um, Deep, I think there's some hope. Would you agree Absolutely. with that? I think there is a lot of hope and I think this is the year. Now, it depends like what the like the legislative path is going to be. 
I personally don't think it's going to be this big bill that just came out. It's most likely going to be something smaller, maybe broken up. Um, and that's why we're working to make sure that we're included in any sort of dreamer legislation, because I think that's going to be at the core of any legislation for immigration that passes. And I think there is a lot of hope for that to happen. Awesome. I, I agree. I mean, I think, you know, as I said, time frame between now and the end of next year, end of 2022 is, is what I think it's going to take. It's going to be be some time. So, okay. So who is this? Do we know? Sonu? Who goes by Sonu? Anybody? That's me. That's me. <laughs> uh-huh. I thought so. So, uh, Shreya says awesome story from Lakshmi. I, I agree. I mean, very, very personal. Um, I'm sure these are your friends. Uh, Ariana, so proud of you, Lakshmi. Um, Ashumari Lakshmi did a great job. Here's another one. Rob, uh, 4716, go Dragons. Lakshmi is my advisee. Absolutely wonderful student to work with. Uh, Rob, I am not surprised by that. Something tells me that uh, she's probably a pretty good student in class. Hopefully her attendance is, uh, is, is good too, right? That's uh, one of the things I learned where I went to school is if you showed up, you had a pretty good uh, likelihood of, uh, of passing those classes. Uh, Padma stay strong queen. We love you. That's from your friend Raven there. Um, so John has a, a few things here in the chat and, and says all these kids have a lot of potential, just like their parents who are high school immigrants. Hope the people on the other side see it the way we all see it. And I think that that's, what's interesting about this blend of E2 kids and H4 kids is that two completely separate paths, right? Um, as I've talked about a lot, I got involved with this because of my work with H1Bs and the H4s and Ls even. Um, but the E2 community and the E2 kid community uh, is widespread and far reaching and impacts a lot of different countries from around the world. And so, yeah, I mean, I think this is something that resonates a lot is, is just what the cycle is and what we lose out on if we don't allow you to go to a U.S. institution, be U.S. educated and graduate and have work authorization. This is where we lose. We lose that war on human capital. Um, Hillary Lakshmi and Padma, you all did great. That's from, from John again. Um, this is from Samir. Samir, man, you know, I know you've been busy. Uh, message me. You and I will catch up. I appreciate you uh, you jumping in the stream here tonight. Um, so Shoba says, this is sad. That school counselor couldn't help watch me, right? So your school counselor, your advisee, and says, hey, you know, more people need to know about this. Yeah, listen, that's why we have... Um, the Improve the Dream series live on the third Thursday of every month. And Deep and I are committed to continuing to talk about this and advocate for this until there is, is change. So proud of you, Lakshmi. Your friends came out in big force tonight for you. I love it. It's amazing. You know, that's what's so important about all this is I agree with Lakshmi. Many college advisors, counselors, et cetera, are unaware things related to visa and status. And that's from, from Ananya. Um, and that's right. I mean, the common American native born does not know about this. They just don't. It's, it's an unknown secret. Well said, Lakshmi from, from our good friend, uh, Nitin, uh, Nitin's a, a good friend of the channel and, um, his, uh, his sons is, uh, as sharp as they come. So Nitin, thanks for, for jumping in the stream here tonight. Um, you know, Suda says, guys, do you have any advice to share for the dreamers who are in high school currently? Something which you feel you should have known before. And I know we touched on this a little bit, but let me throw this out there to, to the four of you. What do you think about this? What, what would be some advice that you have? I mean, you know, two of you are still in high school right now. Padma, you want to jump in? 
Sure, yeah, it's, it's kind of hard because I feel like I'm still getting advice from people, so to give advice is, is a little challenging, but like I said before, just on the mental side, reaching out to people and, you know, sharing your story and finding someone who can listen and understands really helps. And another thing is to look at your options. You know, as we talked about before, I'm looking into applying to the UK and I know it feels like you're giving up, but if that's what's right for you, you know, look into when you need to start switching other countries if you want to look into that. Just keep your options open because one thing my dad said to me is the world is open to you. And that really shifted my perspective on going forward on this piece. You know, you shouldn't feel restricted by your status. So just keep your options open. Yeah, plan B, plan C, you got to have them. Anyone else on that one? Any other advice? I would say um, try to look at, uh, kind of like pa uh, Padna said, look at all the options. I think kind of mapping out the road ahead, even though it's going to be tough, uh, can be very helpful. So having all the options that exist and making sure to talk through them um, and um, just kind of having uh, that path made, depending on what profession they're considering or um, uh, and making sure to also talk with other uh, documented dreamers. So mm -hmm. um, if, if this is for you or um, others, like make sure to have them connect with us. And I'm sure we can find uh, other documented dreamers who are potentially in even, even that state. Yeah, I think the advice is don't sit in the shadows. Don't live like this is a secret. You know, if you have uh, dependents that are your that are teenagers specifically right now, now's the time. Improve the dream.org slash survey. Again, they've got it. That is what's next. Get them in the Slack community. It will change their being and, and honestly their presence, right? Because there is a group of others that are automatically built in support. Um, so John says, Hey, please let our kids dream that they, they are dreamers too. That's exactly right. Um, and that's why we refer to them as documented dreamers, legal childhood arrivals. So this is a good one, Deep. I want to throw this to you. Nigel says, thank you for highlighting the issues for these E2 and H4 kids, legal dreamers, and the common theme with them. They're overachievers. I have two daughters in the same situation. Keep going, everyone. Nigel improve the dream.org slash survey let's have your daughters both go and fill out surveys on their own let's get them in this slack community with deep if they're not already they may already be there. but yeah. that is my plug to make sure that they are are there that is the most important thing so um your, uh, your your advisor backs to per panel young people. This country would be remiss if they can't stay. That was an underlying theme that, uh, you know, my my dad generally texts me after these live streams because he and my mom think I'm a television star because I stream on YouTube, which I love them and their support. Hi, mom, dad, love you both very much. Um, thank you for letting me go and be me all through all those crazy teenage years. Like these girls are... Um, but he texted me after the first live and he said, wow, that is a sharp bunch of kids. Cause that's what you are to us, your kids, even though you're not. Um, but the point is the same with Rob and that's where we lose. We here, the U S the future of our country loses if we reject individuals like the four of you. And that is what we are going to keep talking about this over and over and over until you get sick of me promoting Improve the Dream and ImproveTheDream.org. So Shoba says, many people from our own country here are not aware of our situation. If only I knew about the situation 10 years ago, I could have taken a calculated decision. Yeah, I think that's a very common theme. Uh, Padma, you and parents didn't really know a lot of what was going on with having a child that wasn't born here but bringing them here this is very common where um immigrants who have young children don't really fully understand because you don't really think that oh you know it's going to take me 15 years to get my permanent residency it's not really a thought process for for most 
Indian nationals um, and even Chinese nationals for, for that matter. Um, that isn't something that's thought about. And even for E2 investors that maybe aren't from India or China, but South Korea, for example, you know, they don't realize that my child's going to age out. They're coming here to open a business and make an investment. So listen, I think the more that, 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 the education and the awareness is brought, the less likely we're going to have more issues like this in the future. But hopefully we have some reform that, that clears it up very soon. So um, uh, awesome for you, Sonu, from uh, your friend Inspired Nature says, uh, very good speech, kids, all the very best. Um, you know, Shoba says all of you were awesome. And, and I just agree. I mean, I think that's the theme here. Look, over and over, great job, everyone. Your stories and words were all so inspiring. And that's from Ashimari. And um, from M M Matal, so proud of you all. Lots of love, Lakshmi. That's my little. Um, Sidex asks, ask my question, please, about who qualifies for this initiative. So, Deep, I know we talked about this a little bit at the top of the show um, from some of the language from USCA 21. And I believe that there was a question that had come up, um, you know, on Twitter that was sent to me. And it was basically posed like this. Would you know that those who came to this country technically as a child, but at 17 years old, aged out at 21, but's been living here for 12 years, would they be covered in the um, Improve the Dream initiative? Um, and then kind of a follow on to that later today was, you know, Bill says under 18 is a qualification, so it really helps all of the folks that Improve the Dream caught a fundamental error in the bill about non-immigrant status as a, a disqualification. Can you just give me like two minutes and, and maybe yeah, answer this question? Absolutely. So, um really quickly so for this question if it's so if you're in a documented status and you came under the age of 18 and you've been here for at least four years you would um you technically don't qualify under the current um version of the dream act or what potentially will be the the uh, u.s citizenship act but you would be part of like the initiative that we are trying to improve so we're trying to make sure that all children, whether they're undocumented or documented and meet those requirements would qualify. Um, as far as the age and education requirements, so the current text says you had to be under the age of 18, um, complete at least two years of college and have been here for the last four years. So it's it's lenient requirements, but again, that's not that's likely to change in like the final version of the bill. Um, so it's hard to say exactly like what will end up um, staying, but I think uh, just seeing like like the last versions of like the Dream Acts that have um, kind of moved on, the 18 years probably will stay less than 18 years, so 17 or younger. But uh, how long they've been here, they might end up moving that uh, date like further back. Awesome. See, that's why we have you on to answer these hard hitting questions that I would have to talk around for a couple minutes. Um, Shoba says, more students should know about this. More people who are not affected should advocate for us too. Absolutely. That's the only way we're going to have change is, is power in, in the numbers. Um, you know, great job, Lakshmi. And let's see, awesome job, Lakshmi and kids. Really tough situation. Appreciate you all speaking up. Great. And that's from... Uh, Aru Mugam. And let's see. Great job. Magnificent washes hands. Uh, that's pretty cool there. Lots of, uh, well, we already saw that one. You all nailed it. Yeah. I mean, I think that is always going to be the theme here. Great talk. You know, um, thanks deep for, for answering that. And that's from, um, uh, that's, at my ability power, I believe on on Twitter, um, I think is is who is asking that question. Sidex, thanks for for checking out uh, the stream tonight. So I wanted to um, close out with just a couple of things. That's that's most of the comments in the Q and A that that we had. Um, as I mentioned earlier, March eighteenth, Thursday, March eighteenth, twenty twenty one. Um, Deep, I believe you said we're going to have another group on. You've got more lined up for us for the next few months. Um, so we're just going to keep going and keep introducing more documented dreamers out to you in this channel. 
um, hopefully bringing awareness of this issue to a, a more wider audience. Um, I will, the Tuesday before, so that's March 16th, what I'll do is I will download and I'll put out an audio format of this recording tonight on the H1B Guy podcast, uh, which is available on your favorite podcast app um, or also on the anchor.fm platform, anchor.fm slash the H1B Guy. Um, so there'll be an audio only version of this interview session, Documented Dreamers Series Live 2, that will be there the Tuesday before the next episode. Um, so I wanted to just remind everyone that today's uh, tonight's live stream was brought to you by RecruiterNetworks.com, the smart solution for digital perm ads since 2001. This national job board network provides recruitment websites in 1,024 major U.S. metro areas. Each local job board is its own portal, is a low-cost resource for immigration recruitment ads for all industries and professions with a flat price of $225 per ad, regardless of which city you choose. RecruiterNetworks.com has been the number one place for immigration attorneys, immigration ad agencies, and employers to meet the DOL requirements for the digital portion of the perm advertisement rules. RecruiterNetworks.com. Tell them the H-1B guy sent you. Um, if you have a check out RecruiterNetworks.com, my good friend Richard Allman, who is a huge advocate for documented dreamers um, and just overall legal employment-based immigration, uh, again, if you have a documented dreamer dependent, no matter their age, please have them go to improvethedream.org slash survey. If you're not following Improve the Dream, make sure you're following them on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. They also have a YouTube channel. There'll be links in the description of this video. Make sure you're following them on all their channels. Um, I wanted to say... Thank you to Hillary, thank you to Lakshmi, and thank you to Padma. Um, I'm just so proud of the three of you for coming on and being willing to speak out and tell your story. Your friends came out in full force tonight to support you, and that tells me that the three of you have bright futures in store for you. I believe that this advocacy that is happening um, right now, hopefully, is going to lead to the path that brings the future that, that you've dreamed of. And I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you to the three of you and just give you one last chance. If there's anything that, that you wanted to close with tonight before we wrap up. Just thanks so much for having us on and letting us talk. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. Thank you so much for having us. It was a great discussion. Yeah, Rob, thank you so much for having us. And to everyone um, who watched tonight, like, thank you so much. We really need everyone's support. So I, so please check out um, improvethedream.org. And I'm pretty sure the, like, we can, um, people can subscribe to our newsletter, right? Yes, absolutely. Make sure to go to improvethedream.org. And there's a take action uh, tab that uh, you can do a quick uh, tasks to help us out and then also subscribe to our newsletter. Awesome. And uh, we'll see everyone back on uh, March 18th for the Documented Dreamer Series Live Episode 3. Um, tomorrow uh, will be the H1B Guy News for the week ending uh, February 19th, 2021. Um, but I just wanted to ask those who are still with us, if you haven't already, please like this video subscribe to the H1B Guy channel here on YouTube and click the bell for notifications so that you're notified anytime we go live like we did tonight um, or like we will next Wednesday or again on March 18th. So thank you for everyone who's taken the time to watch this stream, who have come out and support these documented dreamers. We really appreciate your support. The H1B Guy, your global source for all things H1B.